Imagine celebrating the miraculous power of the Passover against the breathtaking backdrop of the sparkling Eastern Caribbean Sea on board a luxurious Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Rejoice at the Messianic Passover Seder led by Rabbi Jonathan Burness, remembering God's mighty hand delivered the Jewish people from bondage. Worship because the miracle held a mystery revealed and completed in Yeshua, Jesus, the Passover Lamb, an ultimate sacrifice for our sins. This is the Jewish Voice seven day Passover cruise on the turquoise waters of the Eastern Caribbean and the enchanting white sand islands of St. Martin, St. Thomas, and Nassau, Bahamas. You don't want to miss the beauty, worship, and celebration as we share the mystery and the miracle of the Passover on the seas. Join Jonathan Burness and Jewish Voice April 16th through 23rd, 2016. Cabin Space is limited. Book now for the best rooms and rates. Call or click today. The window to reach Jewish people in Ukraine is starting to close. This may be our last opportunity to share the hope and love of the Messiah with these precious people. We urgently need you at the 2015 Hear O Israel Festival of Jewish Music and Dance, September 4th through September 14th, 2015 in Ukraine. This amazing opportunity includes three powerful nights of ministry through soul-stirring messianic worship and Rabbi Jonathan Burness sharing the life-saving truth of the Messiah. Our final festival event culminates with a celebration of Erev Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish Feast of Trumpets. Join us as we share the good news, pray, and minister on the streets and at the festivals. Find out what role God wants you to play in reaching His chosen people. Answer the call to join us during this historic time in Ukrainian history and this appointed time on God's calendar. Call 1-800-299-9374 or go to www.jewishvoice.org slash festival for details. Be an important part of sharing the Messiah's love with Jewish people in Ukraine. The Spirit moving mightily. Miracles. Fulfilled prophecy. Marveling as Jesus calls His people back to Himself in preparation for His return. Serving as His hands and feet in far-flung places around the globe. I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. This is what outreach is about with Jewish Voice. You can be a part of it. Now is the time. Answer the call. To find out how, call 1-800-299-9374 or go to www.pleaseanswerthecall.org.
absolutely beautiful. Welcome to our Jewish Voice Live webcast. It's May 12th, 2015, and you were just listening to the very beautiful and inspired music of Misha Getz, worship leader and the talented daughter of my good friend and an amazing psalmist, Marty Getz. The song, and such a beautiful song it is, is the ironic benediction. And this is the prayer of blessing that God gave to uh, Aaron uh, over 3,500 years ago to pray over the people of Israel. It's from a CD, a beautiful CD called Weight of Glory. If you want to enjoy this music in your own home, you can order it here, uh, right from your screen, and you won't go anywhere. You won't miss any of the webcast. But this is a very, very talented and gifted young messianic artist that uh, I'm very, very excited about. So I really encourage you to get the CD. Well, today's fascinating topic we've titled, Now is the Time. I'm sure that you're seeing the signs of the times all around us and are wondering just how close are we really to the return of Jesus. People are asking all sorts of questions and we're going to do our best tonight to answer many of them. Questions like, how can you know where we are on God's timetable? What prophecies uh, have been fulfilled so far? Uh, what still has to happen? before Yeshua returns, and what's gonna happen after he returns? These are very common questions that we're hearing here on Jewish Voice, and I believe we are very, very close to his return, and we need to be ready. You need to be ready. That's why uh, we have webcasts like this, to help prepare you for what uh, I believe is ahead, and very soon ahead. Uh, here tonight to help me tackle this fascinating subject is my good friend and best-selling New York Times author, Joel Richardson. Joel, welcome. Good to have you with us. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to be here. Congratulations on your great new book. We're going to be offering it tonight. And we want to invite you to call or um, email us or tweet your questions. We have a toll-free number for you to call. It's 888-777- 0782. Again, 888-777-0782. Or you can tweet using, using uh, hashtag JVWebcast. One more time, toll-free number, 888 Direct your questions to our guest tonight, Joel Richardson. Or you can tweet us using hashtag JVWebcast. Well, Joe, we had a lot of questions in advance from people. I have tons of them. So you ready to get started? Let's do it. All right, here we go. First one uh, is from Chuck. He, he asks, what are your insights into the false prophet spoken of in the book of Revelation? Do you think this person will be an apostate Christian, an Islamic leader, a New Age leader, etc.? What's your thoughts on the false prophet? profit well first of all we we can't know you know obviously with any absolute certainty but i personally am convinced that he will in all likelihood be a muslim and the reason i believe that is because i believe that the antichrist will be a muslim and so it's very difficult to imagine uh, you know, a new age or working with a Muslim world leader. This is going to be uh, a team that is primarily leading the Islamic world and then much of the apostate world and, and really just the, the, the anti-Semitic world along with them or sort of going along with their program. But I think at the heart of it, there'll be a distinctly Islamic characteristic to this team. And so I think the false prophet will most likely be a Muslim. Joel, you know, I find it very interesting. There's just a myriad of books on the last days, on the end times out there. And classically, it's always been a uh, revived Roman Empire that the false prophet and the uh, Antichrist emerged from. But I'm finding more and more books are coming out in recent years on a revived uh, Islamic Empire. And I think it's, it, it's, it really fits the biblical narrative, the, the, the biblical prophecy uh, that we find throughout the prophets. Ver, ver, I think it's, it's, it makes a lot of sense, frankly. 
Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the accusation that will commonly be made is people will say, you Christians are always just pointing to the political boogeyman of the day, and so America's greatest enemy today is Islam, and so you Christians are just tacking in the wind, adjusting your eschatology, and trying to cast Islam as the system of the Antichrist. But in truth, that's, that's not what it is at all. It really is the church, the people of God, awakening to the thoroughly Israel centricity of the story. And once we understand that the whole story revolves around Jerusalem, then it also stands to reason that it is the nations that surround Israel that make up the head of the spear uh, of the coming uh, Antichrist system. It's not to say other nations will not be involved. I believe they will be. But I believe the Islamic world will be the head of the spear. Yeah, I, I don't think, and I don't think we should ignore the realities of, of world events. Uh, Islam has become the greatest threat that the world has ever known. It was Nazi Germany, and uh, praise God, uh, not the Third Reich was defeated. But now, radical Islam has become the greatest threat that the world has ever known, and it's not going away. It's getting worse and worse and worse, and uh, I think we, ha we have to pay attention to present realities. You know, Joel, all that these, I've been a believer over 30 years, and so much teaching on, on this, es what, they, what some refer to as the eschatology of victory, where we're going to defeat the, ver very much like a, um, a, you know, third century Christian utopia, we are going to, um, uh, de defeat all world powers and present the earth to the Messiah when the reality is the world's getting darker and darker and darker and uh, I, I think it's very obvious that we're seeing this this parallel a world that's getting darker and darker and a church that's getting I believe brighter and more glorious and uh, ultimately Yeshua returns to defeat his enemies in our enemies. So I, I think ignoring present realities that, that world events are pointing to radical Islam as the greatest danger the world have, has ever faced is something we need to take very seriously. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you hear a lot of these uh, these young college-age Christians, they're embracing what's called post-millennialism, this victorious eschatology, the idea that the church and the gospel is just going to go forward and win, 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 and everything's just going to get better, and eventually we're going to hand the kingdom to the Messiah on a silver platter. And they always love to poo-poo and put down the fact that when you look out at the world, things are getting darker, and the gospel, it's making great strides in some areas, but it's also collapsing in other areas. And, you know, the fact of the matter is Jesus said that we are to discern the signs of the times, which means... The scriptures are not detached from the events unfolding in the world around us. And, um, you know, look, I want to be positive. I want to be hopeful. I want to aim high. I want to believe for a great harvest of souls. But I don't want to live in denialism. I don't want to live. I don't want to be a denialist. And the fact of the matter is this victorious eschatology is unbiblical. And even to a degree, it's absurd. Yeah. We need to be prepared and, and to be aware of the reality that's unfolding a around Absolutely. Us. And we're not advocating, you know, heading for the mountains or doom and gloom. We occupy till he comes. We, we proclaim the good news with boldness. We pray. We draw close to him. We do our job here on this earth until we're taken out in the, or the Lord returns. But we also uh, aren't, aren't uh, uh, ignoring reality. Uh, well said, Joel. Diane from Arizona is on the line with the call. Diane, how are you tonight? Oh, we're doing good. Good. Well, thank you for being part of the program tonight. You have a question for Joel? Yeah. Well, yes. I've heard it so many times, mentioned so many different ways. Can you explain the rapture of the church? Joel, go to it. The rapture of the church, the blessed hope. Yes, this is the blessed hope is that which we are to fix our hope, our expectation on. And in my personal opinion, I hope I don't get in trouble here. I believe that we will go through what's called the tribulation along with the Jewish people. And I believe that we will be translated, will be resurrected, will be changed when Jesus returns. 
And I know that, you know, many in the church today believe that we'll be resurrected, raptured be seven years before the return of Jesus. In my opinion, when I look at Matthew 24, Jesus' sermon on the end times, verse 29, he makes it fairly clear that we are raptured after the tribulation. And Paul also in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 makes it really clear that we are not raptured until after the Antichrist appears and a great falling away occurs first. Joel, I'm sure we're going to get a number of calls uh, refuting that. We'll see. We have guests on that uh, believe in pre-tribulation, some that have made a case for mid-tribulation, some post-tribulation. I, I, I don't, uh, we don't have an official stance at Jewish Voice, but I'll just share this since it's just our private little webcast between you and I and a few thousand people. I, I tend to agree with you. Uh, we'll see. We are both certainly all pan-tribulationists, right? We believe pan-tribulation that all work out in the end. So whether it's pre, mid, or post, we certainly know God has everything under control. Question from Linda. With the rise of ISIS and an Islamic uh, caliphate, where do you think we are in the timeline of end-time birth pangs? Again, where, are, where do you think we are on the timeline of end-time birth birth pangs. And of course, Linda's referring to the statement of Yeshua that, that uh, like birth pangs, these things will increase. Yeah. When I look at Jesus' statement regarding birth pangs, I believe he says these are the beginning of birth pangs. He lists a series of things. And I believe he's speaking of the first three and a half years of that final seven-year period. I don't believe we've entered that window yet. I believe there's a series of fairly dramatic events that need to unfold in the Middle East. I personally think there's a strong chance that we will see a regional Iranian war. I'm not dogmatic about that. Um, but we're going to see a continued shakeup of boundaries, uh, of national boundaries throughout the region. And out of the, the chaos of these wars will emerge uh, one that Daniel refers to as a little horn. He begins small. He rises up with a, uh, a facade of being peaceful, moderate, conciliatory, and he is able to establish enough political capital to enter into some sort of agreement, treaty, or covenant with the leaders of Israel, and that is what initiates the final seven years. We're not there yet, but I will say this. The general landscape of the, uh, the contours of the landscape, as described by the prophets, are clearly coming into focus, and I believe we very well may be rapidly approaching that final seven-year window. So a, qu a question I have, and I'm asked this so often, you made the statement Israel-centric, which I think is so important. I want you to, to define that or unpack that a little more for us. And my question is, uh, in addition to that, where is the U.S. in all this, in biblical prophecy? Yeah, is, you could say Israel-centric or uh, Israelio-centric. Uh, essentially, all this means is that the story revolves around the people of Israel and the land of Israel. You'll hear again a lot of these young preterists, amillennialists, these young kids today, and they say, well, God's not interested in real estate. Well, the fact of the matter is he's very much interested in real estate. Yes, his plan is universal, and he's thrown open the doors to the Gentiles, and he's going to redeem all of creation. But the launching pad, the very foundation from which he's going to do that is the land of Israel, and thus the land of Israel in Jerusalem is the geographic location that the whole story revolves around. Now, with regard to America, we clearly are not central in the story, whether it be the prophets or the New Testament. And so the conclusion of a lot of, I've heard a lot of people say, we must conclude that we get wiped out. In my opinion, that's a fairly irresponsible statement to make. I think it can be explained by the fact that the story simply isn't about us. You know, God's world doesn't revolve around the United States as much as we would like to think his wor world conforms to our worldview. Now, there's a strong chance that we'll be diminished, and it certainly seems to be, we're, we already seem to be well down that path. But I don't think we need to just enter into this fatalistic, deterministic perspective that says we're going to be wiped out. We need to be contending for revival in this nation and praying that in that final hour we will stand with Israel. We don't know the end, and until, we, until the end is here, we will pray and cry out and contend for our nation. 
Great answer, Joel. Thank you. We have a call from Joanne from my old home state of New York. Joanne, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, my um, question right now is um, that we're in Matthew 24. That's our weather forecast. I mean, everything that ha is happening daily is right from Matthew 24. And uh, the other part of this is um, Damascus, the biblical prophecy that Damascus will be wiped out and never rebuilt. And uh, from what's taking place in Syria and that area in the Middle East, I mean, that's something to, you know, really watch out for daily to see that biblical prophecy. Joanne, thanks. Joel, you want to comment on that? Damascus, the prophecy of Damascus being leveled and rising no more. Yeah, uh, Isaiah 17, a lot of people, particularly in light of all that's unfolding in Syria, they think, well, this is about to be fulfilled imminently. Uh, I think there's a strong case that can be made for this being an end time prophecy. The problem with it being imminent is that when you read the full oracle of Isaiah 17, it also speaks of the most of northern Israel being largely desolate. It speaks of it being a sparsely populated, like, you know, just a few gleanings from the fruit field here or there. And so, in my opinion, this is speaking of the final period of seven years just before Jesus returns. I don't think this is something that we can say is about to happen right now, because it speaks of much more than just the destruction of Damascus. And when we read the full context of the chapter, I think it's something much more dramatic and it's a bit further down the line. We can certainly see things lining up in that direction, but again, we're not quite there yet. Yeah, is it fair to say that the pieces are coming into into place now? Yes. Is yes. a fair way to put it. We're taking your calls uh, live, 888-777-0782, 888-777-0782. We have to take a short break. Uh, we'll take your calls when we come back. And if this topic uh, is as fascinating to you as it is to me, and I encourage you to take a moment and order a, a book that uh, Joel just released. It's entitled, When a Jew Rules the World. A little bit different, not when Jews were the wor rule the world, but when a Jew, of course, Yeshua rules the world, what the Bible really says about Israel in the plan of God. New York Times bestselling author Joel Richardson's newest book, When a Jew Rules the World, and I'm also going to include a uh, CD uh, that I did, very important CD, The Dangerous Lie of Replacement Theology, one of the great lies that we need to refute as followers of Yeshua. You can order right now from your screen and you won't go anywhere. Uh, you won't leave the webcast. Uh, this is important information and uh, we want to get it into your hands. Don't go anywhere. The information uh, in the second part of our discussion will be even more urgent as we answer more of your questions and tie them into current world events. So stay with us. Your gracious gift and support of the work of Jewish Voice right now will make you a vital part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Today, we are currently preparing for one of our next medical clinics to bless a remote Lost Tribes community in Zimbabwe who clearly have ties to the ancient people of Israel, particularly the Levites, and have been practicing distinctly Jewish customs for centuries. Our medical teams will provide more than just physical care and comfort. They will share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their promised Messiah. Today, we urgently need your help to equip and fund this vital upcoming outreach. Time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable there, especially infants and toddlers. You can help save them, but you must act now. Will you be a blessing to these needy Jewish people? As our special thank you, when you share a gift of any size right now, we will send you the exciting new book by today's guest, Joel Richardson, called When a Jew Rules the World, What the Bible Really Says About Israel in the Plan of God. This remarkable book will open your eyes to the reality of the coming thousand-year rule of Yeshua from Jerusalem. 
As an additional expression of our appreciation for your support, we'll also send you the perfect complement to this book, Jonathan Burness's teaching on CD, The Dangerous Lie of Replacement Theology. Tackling this deceptive teaching that has infiltrated churches about Jewish people in Israel being replaced in God's plans, purposes, and promises, equipping you to refute this dangerous doctrine. Now, if God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $120 or more today, we'll send you the gifts just mentioned, plus two additional inspirational gifts to enrich and deepen your connection to the Jewish roots of your faith. These include the Jonathan Burness teaching on CD titled, God's Plan for Israel, and we'll send you the beautiful and meaningful Yeshua Menorah. This lovely decorative piece features a cityscape of the holy city Jerusalem inscribed with the name Yeshua. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call or click now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. I really hope you'll respond and uh, you'll be helping thousands of people in places like Zimbabwe and Ethiopia. Just came back from Zimbabwe last week, over 7,000 people treated, absolutely amazing. I'll talk more about that later on in the program. When a Jew Rules the World uh, by Joel Richardson, New York Times best-selling author is our guest tonight. And we're taking your calls live, 888-777-0782, 888-777-0782, or you can tweet us using hashtag JVWebcast. Peggy from Minnesota is on the line. Peggy, thank you for being patient, welcome. Oh, hi. It's so good to be with you tonight. The very familiar passage in <coughs> Revelation 19.11 talks about heaven open and behold the white horse and Jesus coming on it. But when we jump down to verse 13, that passage that says he is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, mm. uh, and then a cross-reference from Isaiah 63.3, 3. I'm wondering about the timeline of that. When does Jesus uh, come from Eden, Edom, excuse me, with garments of crimson from Basra, and it says he has trodden the wine trough alone, and from the peoples there was no man with me. I also trod them in my anger and trampled them in my wrath, and their lifeblood is sprinkled on my garments. Can you give me a time frame for that? Peggy, great question. Joel, glad you're with me tonight. It's quite a question. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a challenge because in Isaiah 63, and really you have a parallel chapter in Isaiah 34, you have Yeshua is on the ground. He's already returned, and his robes are soaked in blood because he's crushing his enemies like grapes. Of course, we have references to that, the trotting of the winepress of the wrath of God Almighty, also in the book of Revelation. But then in Revelation 19, you have this picture of him bursting forth from heaven. And his robes are already soaked in blood. And, of course, he's with the armies of heaven, whereas back in Revelation 60, I mean, in Isaiah 63, he says that he carried out the wrath of God, the vengeance of God, uh, on his own. So it's interesting that most commentators would say that Revelation 19 is the return of Jesus. But, in fact, it seems to be an event that... Uh, is taking place sometime after the return of Jesus, that there's, there's a, a complex series of events that unfold when Jesus returns. And this is important because he doesn't simply return and snap his fingers. He actually returns and engages in, uh, in wiping out his enemies, delivering his people. And so not only does a Jew rule the world, but a Jewish man is coming back to engage in a hostile takeover of the earth. Uh, maybe that'll be the title of my next book. Great, great answer. Peggy, great question. Thanks for uh, joining us tonight. Joel, I have so many questions going in so many different directions. Uh, Mark from Arizona asked, Joel, do the Islamists pay attention to any material such as that in your book, The Islamic Antichrist? I don't know if you can answer that one, but uh, it was asked. Sure. You know, I've certainly had uh, 
you know, quite a few Muslims that have interacted with my material. There was, um, you know, there's entire websites devoted to me. Um, usually it's the Christians, of course, they are a little bit more concerned with trying to uh, debunk or minimize the, the, the rise of Islam, and, and they're trying to argue for their own particular peculiar eschatology and this sort of thing. You know, but the thing of it is, is you know, again, with ISIS, Pamela Geller was, you know, recently the, the target of an assassination attempt. Um, I'm sure that they are paying attention. Uh, you know, I won't, I, if I become the target of radical Islamists, I certainly hope that it's because I'm glorifying Jesus and it's not because I'm attacking Islam. I believe Islam is worthy of scorn. But I want my primary message to be about declaring the beauties of Yeshua and his coming kingdom and, and loving Muslims in the process. And, um, but nevertheless, the ch because the church does need to wake up to some of these realities, these things have needed to be written. And unfortunately, yes, there are some radicals that, that do pay attention to it. Yeah, I want everyone to understand that there is only one peace plan and there's only one way for uh, a radical um, a Muslim uh, or a militant uh, jihadist to be turned, and that's through the gospel. We have the most powerful uh, weapons available, if you will, the weapons of our warfare, which are prayer and the proclamation of the gospel. And I'm so glad that you're mentioning that, Joel. Diane from Canada is on the line. Diane, we love Canada so much. Thanks for... Uh, joining us tonight. You're welcome. It will really, really big, a big pleasure for me. And the question is, I read uh, today, by, in fact, uh, Revelation chapter 7, and it mentioned about 12 tribes, uh, many thousand, uh, and then it talks about the rapture, which makes a, number, a total of 144,000 exactly. So, uh, who are uh, from different nations? Are we concerned? Who are concerned in the rapture? Okay, uh, I think the question is about the 144,000 specifically. I'm not sure yes. how she's tying it. How are you tying that into the rapture? Exactly. Who are the ones who can, will be in the rapture? Okay, so who who are the ones in the rapture? And uh, relate, and she's relating it to the 144,000 in Revelation 7. Exactly, because there is 12 tribes that mentioned in chapter 7, and I wonder if it has to do with these 12 tribes exactly. Okay. Joel? Well, you know, it's interesting because, yeah, there in chapter 7, first it mentions uh, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, but then it immediately it follows, and it says, and then I looked, and in heaven was a great crowd which no one could count, and these are the ones that had come out of the tribulation. And so this is a popular uh, portion of scripture that those from the mid-trib perspective will sometimes point to because they seem to have been raptured, but they clearly came out of the great tribulation. So, you know, again, it's a, I don't know that I have a clear answer to that. I will say this though, I absolutely believe that uh, there will be far more than merely 144,000 Jews who will be saved uh, when Jesus returns. Now, perhaps there will be 144,000 fiery evangelists throughout the seven-year period, and then the great harvest will come in when Yeshua returns. But I think clearly that at the return of the Messiah, the number of Jews that stand before him who have just come to faith at the time of his return will be far greater uh, than merely 144,000. I, I agree with you. you know, the classic uh, teaching that I heard uh, growing up as a believer was that, and, and predominantly a pre-tribulation position, is that the 144,000 are Jews that remain behind during the tribulation and were the ones that brought the, proclaimed the gospel with signs and wonders. I'm sure you've heard that one, Joel, many times. Um, a, a tweet from Tina, is the wrath of God the seven-year tribulation uh, or after Jesus? Is the wrath of God the seven-year tribulation or uh, is this after Jesus uh, returns? 
Yeah, personally, I believe that the wrath of God is poured out after Jesus returns. And so I don't believe that believers will be subjected in the in the flesh, in the unre- unresurrected flesh, to the wrath of God. I believe that Jesus returns and is actively involved in executing vengeance against his enemies and the enemies of his people. And that that which comes before his return, you could largely say, is uh, Jacob's distress, the great tribulation, uh, the the persecution of Satan. But that's distinct from the wrath of God, which is poured out after he uh, returns. Yeah, very good distinction. Uh, there's so many different views on this. I, I'll expect a lot of follow-up uh, comments rather than questions on different positions. Uh, good question from Sharon, writing from Alabama. With so many books on end-time prophecy, how can we discern which ones are accurate? Uh, my recommendation would be primarily to read Jonathan's books, uh, my books. No, um, just kidding. You know, this is, this is, I'll, I'll say this. What is required before the Lord is diligent study and humility and confidence that the Lord will guide you by his Holy Spirit into truth. And don't become good students of your teachers. Become a good student of the Word of God. And if you begin with the understanding that the Scriptures are thoroughly Israel-centric, that will be a profound uh, reality that will help open the prophets, open the Scriptures to you. And, you know, there's there's a simple series of things that you can do. You know, begin at the beginning. Don't begin with the book of Revelation. Begin with the prophets. Work forward and, you know, begin with what is simple before working on to the complex, the symbolic, and the difficult. There's a lot of basic things, but if you begin with humility and trust God, He is not the author of confusion, and He will guide you into all truth. Good answer. Uh, Joe, we just have a couple minutes left. We can take one or two more calls. 888 uh, Andrea from North Carolina. Uh, well, she we asked this one already. Where is the U.S. on the prophetic scriptures? Joan from New Jersey. Do you believe there will be a millennial temple? If so, are there scriptures to support this? Moving to the millennium for a few minutes here. Yeah, well, clearly Ezekiel chapter 40 through 48, nine chapters are dedicated to intricate detail, really a blueprint for the Millennial Temple. And so either you believe that this is telling the truth, you know, that the Bible means what it says, or you have to believe that nine chapters of intricate detail essentially mean nothing more than just an idealized state. This is what the allegory guys say, you know, this is just speaking of an idealized state. It doesn't make any sense. Um, Beyond that, in the book of Daniel, you have references. Oh, I'm sorry, that would be the tribulation temple. So, yeah, I would say this is the primary uh, portion of Scripture that lays it out there. There will be a temple during the millennium. And nine chapters is, is pretty profound. In fact, when you look at the ancient writings of the early Christians, you can't find a single comment anywhere on these nine chapters because most of the early guys were replaced they believed in replacement theology they were amillennialists they didn't believe in the millennium and they didn't know what to do with it because it's so clear and so i think if you read through those chapters you'll see that it's pretty impossible to get around if you believe it is it is absolutely impossible to get around next time you come left to talk about the sacrificial system in the millennium uh just one last question we're out of time unfortunately your thoughts on the blood moons. Your thoughts on the blood moons. You know, there's a lot of controversy around the blood moons, and I'll be honest, I began fairly skeptical, uh, probably because I'm a skeptical person. But the fact of the matter is the Lord does speak through the, through the, the stars, the sun, the moon, and so forth, and he is on a particular calendar. And... Um, You know, I don't think that we should brush these things aside. There's a lot of those that are fully on board and those that are really just cynical about it. I think that we should be watchful. You know, even if the blood moons, the the, the, you know, solar eclipses were not happening, there's enough taking place in the world that we should be paying attention. But by the same token, I will say this. That doesn't, we should not be paralyzed by fear, anxiety, and worry. Jesus said, don't worry. We need to be people walking in faith 
while being watchful, but nevertheless trusting God that no matter what's ahead, he's going to get us through it. Amen. Amen. Well, we're out of time, but I'm going to press it a little bit and take one more call from our, another Canadian friend, Carly, from Canada. Carly, our last caller, your question. Hi, thanks for taking my call. I just want to know where Joel thinks we're standing right now with the Psalm 83 war. Uh-huh. Joel, exactly. final question, Psalm 83 war. Go to it. Well, there's a lot of speculation that this is a war that's imminent. The problem is if you look at all of the names listed in Psalm 83, uh, they are mentioned as being judged at the day of the Lord when Jesus returns. So, for instance, earlier we mentioned Isaiah 63. Jesus is in Edom, and he's judging Edom. Uh, we could go down the list. Moab, Edom, so on and so forth. These are, I believe that this takes place. It culminates at the end with the return of Jesus. This is not some imminent separate uh, war that's going to take place. I, I think we need to recognize the unity of the scriptures and the story is not that complicated. Joel, so many questions, so little time. We didn't get to talk about replacement theology. There's so many questions uh, that we just didn't get to. We'll have to have you back again in the future. Thanks for joining us. All right. Anytime, Jonathan. Well, I really enjoyed that conversation. And uh, again, so many questions, so little time. And uh, I'm sure you enjoyed Joel's uh, answers as well. To get more of your questions answered about where we are on God's timetable and specifics about what is yet what is yet ahead, we're offering uh, Joel's new book, When a Jew Rules the World, what the Bible really says about Israel in the plan of God. And folks, Israel is central to God's plan for the last days. You need to understand this. We need to reorient uh, to Israel, and we see that this has become the focal point of world attention. It's not by accident. I'm also dealing uh, with a very dangerous lie that we need to refute in the body of Messiah for those that love Yeshua and his people, the Jewish people, the dangerous lies of replacement theology. So we're pairing them up together, and you can order these right from your screen. You won't leave the webcast, and uh, I hope you get these important materials. Well, don't go anywhere right after uh, this sh short video. Uh, we'll give you breaking news and insider insights from around the world about Israel, about ISIS and more that you don't hear anywhere else. Don't go away. Your gracious gift in support of the work of Jewish Voice right now will make you a vital part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Today, we are currently preparing for one of our next medical clinics to bless a remote Lost Tribes community in Zimbabwe who clearly have ties to the ancient people of Israel, particularly the Levites, and have been practicing distinctly Jewish customs for centuries. Our medical teams will provide more than just physical care and comfort. They will share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their promised Messiah. Today, we urgently need your help to equip and fund this vital upcoming outreach. Time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable there, especially infants and toddlers. You can help save them, but you must act now. Will you be a blessing to these needy Jewish people? As our special thank you when you share a gift of any size right now, we will send you the exciting new book by today's guest, Joel Richardson, called When a Jew Rules the World, What the Bible Really Says About Israel in the Plan of God. This remarkable book will open your eyes to the reality of the coming thousand-year rule of Yeshua from Jerusalem. As an additional expression of our appreciation for your support, we'll also send you the perfect complement to this book, Jonathan Burness's teaching on CD, The Dangerous Lie of Replacement Theology. Tackling this deceptive teaching that has infiltrated churches about Jewish people in Israel being replaced in God's plans, purposes, and promises, equipping you to refute this dangerous doctrine. Now, if God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $120 or more today, we'll send you the gifts just mentioned, plus two additional inspirational gifts to enrich and deepen your connection to the Jewish roots of your faith. These include the Jonathan Burness teaching on CD titled, God's Plan for Israel, 
And we'll send you the beautiful and meaningful Yeshua Menorah. This lovely decorative piece features a cityscape of the holy city Jerusalem inscribed with the name Yeshua. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this final outreach and request your thank you resources, please call or click now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. You know, we, we're not a, a materials ministry here. We, we offer materials that we think uh, will be helpful to you, but it's about the people that we help through your prayer and financial support and thousands of lives tens of thousands of lives are being changed with the help of people like you. I just came back from, some, from Zimbabwe. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But uh, by getting these materials, you are helping change people's lives forever. And now it's time for our breaking news and insider insight segment where we share news from around the world that you won't hear anywhere else. There's certainly not the same perspective these are hot topics in the news tonight involving, uh, in particular, Israel and ISIS. We're paying a lot of attention at Jewish Voice to Israel and to ISIS. Well, sadly, anti-Semitism is on the rise. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu ju just addressed the crowd at the opening of the fifth global forum for combating anti-Semitism. It's a shame that we have to have such conferences, but he stated at that conference that Israel has now become the focus of latter-day anti-Semites and that contemporary anti-Semitism doesn't just slander, vilify, and target Jewish people. It is now first and foremost targeting the Jewish state today. A recent report by the Cantor Center for the Study of Contemporary European Jewry at Tel Aviv University reported that violent anti-Semitism, listen to this now, surged by a whopping 40% last year. We should all take note of that. In 2014, for example, according to the European Jewish Congress, a total of 766 violent incidents were reported worldwide, a sharp increase over the 554 that were tallied just one year before in 2013. Many streets in our European cities have become hunting grounds for Jews, and some Jews are now forced to avoid community institutions and synagogues as a result, said EJC President Dr. Moish Cantor. Around the globe, in places like Ukraine, France, and Argentina, just to mention a few, Waves of Jewish people are now leaving their home countries and they're making Aliyah, immigrating to Israel in record numbers. They're preferring to brave the ongoing terrorist threats in Israel rather than face the daily anti-Semitism that sadly has become a part of everyday life in the places they live. The Anti-Defamation League states, that anti-Semitism is at an all-time world high since World War II. It's, it's just shocking. My take on anti-Semitism, folks, Satan hates the Jews, and he continues to turn nations and peoples against the nation of Israel and the people of Israel. Here's the good news. God continues to work his plan for the redemption of Israel, and in the end, Israel wins. Satan will ultimately be defeated. So praise God for that. As long as the sun and moon shine by day and night, according to Jeremiah 31, God continues to preserve the Jewish people. Now my take on the Jewish people returning to Israel in record numbers, the gathering of the Jewish people back to the land of Israel is an end time prophetic event that many who teach about the last days miss and that many Jewish people have to return to the land and to the Lord before the Messiah returns. It was foretold by Isaiah and many other prophets, for example, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12, 
that he will raise a banner for the nation and he will gather the exiles of Israel and will assemble the scattered people of Judah back from the four corners of the earth. I've got news for you. It's happening now today before our very eyes. And if you're part of this ministry, you are a part of the regathering physically and spiritually of the people of Israel. On to ISIS. ISIS is operating in America. Most of you heard about the failed terrorist attack on May 3rd in Garland, Texas, targeted at the Draw Mohammed contest. It's been all over the place. Many believe that it's the first such attack by ISIS on American soil, but it certainly won't be the last. Just some facts. And by the way, on the screen, Nadir, Sophie, and Elton Simpson, for those of you that live locally here, my friends who live locally here in Phoenix, both of these ISIS converts are living in Phoenix, are from Phoenix. According to the Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life, the U.S. population projections show that the number of Muslims will more than double over the next two decades from 2.6 million in 2010 to 6.2 million in 2030 or by 2030. This is including immigration and natural growth. Uh, these are statistics published by uh, the Census Bureau. Of course, most Muslims love peace. They're peace loving uh, and they're coming to take advantage of benefits that we provide in a democratic uh, country. But there are or is a troubling trend of radicalization taking place in our midst. FBI Director James uh, Comey has revealed that his agency is investigating suspected uh, supporters of ISIS. Listen to this. In every state across the U.S., in every state, you can't hide. We, they're there. We can't pretend that this isn't happening in the U.S., but uh, we need, to, as believers, to respond in a very specific ways. First, we have to have the courage to call evil what it is. Even if our president won't, we need to call evil by what it is. And ISIS is evil. Militant Islam is evil. And we can't back down from telling the truth about uh, ISIS and radical Islam. And we need to make our voice is known. We don't cower with fear. We stand firm in the truth and we take action and we vote for politicians who understand these truths. And then as believers, we're called to pray for our enemies. Have you ever done that? Have you ever prayed that Yeshua, Jesus, would, would reveal himself to men and women who have declared their hatred for both Christians and Jews and Americans? Don't forget that we've been called to pray for our enemies and that we have the most powerful weapons available to us anywhere. And that's prayer and the proclamation of the gospel. And finally, we need to pray for our brothers and sisters that have fallen into the hands of ISIS. Christians are being killed and we need to take a stand. We need to pray for them. We need to make our voices known. We need to get involved in humanitarian efforts to help them. So we pray for their protection, we pray for courage, and we pray for God to defeat this evil called ISIS. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. A great little cartoon. Uh, let's go uh, to Syria and join ISIS. And don't be ridiculous, we can just meet them at the mall. It's a sad but true truth. So be praying, be vigilant, and uh, remember to share your faith because that's the only way that a life can be changed. So amen. Come Lord Jesus. Uh, we're waiting for you and we're going to fulfill our call while, we'll st while we are still here. It's time to switch gears now and talk about our upcoming Passover cruise. It's coming up April 16th through 23rd of 2016. We're going to be sailing the beautiful Caribbean Sea. So leave ISIS behind and join me and my family for the special cruise. A wonderful time to fellowship together, to rest, refresh, and be renewed. 
I'll also be leading you in a very special Passover Seder meal on the, uh, on the ship where we're going to celebrate the prophetic miracle of Passover and we will talk about and lift up Yeshua, our Passover lamb. So I want to encourage you to join us. Uh, there's a limited uh, space uh, availability and we have a discount uh, that you can uh, save up to $200 per cabin. So hurry and register. You can go to www.jvpassovercruise.com to reserve your space now and take a moment to watch this short clip on this fabulous Passover cruise on the Carib Caribbean coming up in 2016. Imagine celebrating the miraculous power of the Passover against the breathtaking backdrop of the sparkling Eastern Caribbean Sea on board a luxurious Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Rejoice at the Messianic Passover Seder led by Rabbi Jonathan Burness, remembering God's mighty hand delivered the Jewish people from bondage. Worship because the miracle held a mystery revealed and completed in Yeshua, Jesus, the Passover Lamb, and ultimate sacrifice for our sins. This is the Jewish Voice seven day Passover cruise on the turquoise waters of the Eastern Caribbean and the enchanting white sand islands of St. Martin, St. Thomas, and Nassau, Bahamas. You don't want to miss the beauty, worship, and celebration as we share the mystery and the miracle of the Passover on the seas. Join Jonathan Burness and Jewish Voice April 16th through 23rd, 2016. Cabin Space is limited. Book now for the best rooms and rates. Call or click today. It's going to be great, but you need to sign up now because space is filling up. Hey, I told you before that uh, anything you do financially helps really needy Jewish people in places like Ethiopia and Zimbabwe. I want to give you uh, some important updates. Our medical uh, outreach team just returned from Barangwa, Zimbabwe, where God was at work in amazing ways among the Lemba tribe. I, I'm sure you've heard about the Lemba. It's uh, through our program. It's really because of your faithfulness that this outreach to Jewish people in desperate need is made possible and I want you to take a look at what your generosity has made possible so far this year. Look at the numbers on the screen. Uh, I was able to attend this outreach and it was absolutely amazing. In Waliso, uh, Ethiopia, look at that, 9,621 patients treated in one week, 3161 through our prayer room, 1,212 made a profession of faith in Yeshua as their Messiah. And this is why we do it. We do it to share our faith and to earn the right to be heard. And then our recent outreach in Barangwa, 7,659 treated in the bush of Zimbabwe just on generators. There's not even electricity. 641 that prayed to receive Yeshua as their Messiah. And they're being followed up now as I speak. We would love to have you join us for an upcoming outreach this year. We really need help. There's still a lot of outreaches left, both in Zimbabwe and in Ethiopia, and you can make a difference. So check out our locations and dates and prayerfully considering answering the call to be the hands and feet of Yeshua on an outreach with us this year in 2015. You don't have to be a medical professional. You just have to love the Lord and want to be used by him. For more information on our upcoming outreach opportunities and for information to share with your church, your friends, doctors, or dentists you may know, you can go to www.pleaseanswerthecall.org. Once again, www.pleaseanswerthecall.org. And we have a short video clip uh, to tell you more. Take a look. The Spirit Moving Mightily. Miracles, fulfilled prophecy, marveling as Jesus calls his people back to himself in preparation for his return, serving as his hands and feet in far-flung places around the globe. I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. 
This is what outreach is about with Jewish Voice. You can be a part of it. Now is the time. Answer the call. To find out how, call 1-800-299-9374 or go to www.pleaseanswerthecall.org. I sure hope you'll answer the call. And here's what I'll promise you. You'll be completely changed forever. God will use you in such powerful ways. And he will also work in you. you, you he'll, he'll change you from within. And I've seen this happen over and over and over again. So please answer the call. I urge you to answer the call. Well, every webcast we take time to pray for the many prayer requests that we receive from so many of you. And if we don't pray for them during the webcast, please know that we do pray for each and every prayer request we receive. Uh, so I want you to know that uh, you will not go without prayer if you have uh, submitted your prayer request. We have faithful people here at the ministry praying for needs. And even if you didn't send in your prayer request, God can touch you where you are, whatever you're facing. God knows, God cares, God loves you, and he wants to touch your situation. All you need to do is reach out in faith. Iris uh, has asked for prayer for her 23-year-old son who has uh, suffered kidney failure and now is on dialysis. Iris, we're believing with you. Amy, prayer for comfort for her father. We're agreeing with you. Uh, Gerald and Monica are praying for financial breakthrough, as I know many of you are that are watching right now. Mary Elizabeth from North Carolina has asked for prayer to be healed from cancer cataracts, diabetes. Mary Elizabeth, we're standing with you in prayer and speak healing to you in the name of Yeshua. In Jesus' name. So many prayer requests. Thomas has asked for prayer to save his home. Some of you might be facing foreclosure on your home. Our God is able to supply for your every need according to his riches and glory in the Messiah. A number of prayers for terminal illnesses, for um, uh, family restoration. Uh, we're agreeing with you, Robert from Colorado, uh, for healing. Uh, with you, Leticia, for your husband, Dave, who's starting to lose his memory. Uh, Daniel and Cheryl for congregational relationships. Uh, Carrie from in California lost her home and job and is asking for a new home and a new job. And he's able to do that, Carrie. We agree with you. I just want you to reach out in faith with me, and we're, we're going to agree together. The Bible says where two or three agree is touching any one thing, it shall be done. So, Father, I ask in the name of Yeshua, in Jesus' name, that you would touch those right now that have a physical need. We rebuke the spirit of cancer. I rebuke diabetes. I rebuke kidney failure and speak life to those kidneys. I command livers to be restored. I command digestive systems to be opened and unblocked right now in the name of Yeshua. I speak divine provision to those who are facing a lost job or a, the loss of a home. Whatever the need is, Lord, I thank you that the need is met according to your promise, according to your mercy. Your mercies are new every day, and we claim that mercy. In the name of Yeshua, amen and amen. I believe God has touched so many of you tonight. Just continue to believe, and your prayers will be answered by faith. Well, we're out of time. Thank you for joining us tonight. It was a great night, wasn't it? And mark your calendars for our next webcast, September 29th at 8 p.m. Eastern with Eric Steckelbeck, award-winning journalist, terrorist expert, and authority on Middle East current events. Eric will be discussing his new book, Isaac, ISIS Exposed, with an upfront and in-depth look at the realities of ISIS, the threat to the U.S., and what it means to all of us. So you don't want to miss it. And also some really exciting news. We're going daily. Jewish Voice with Jonathan Burnus is going to be airing new and exciting content every day, Monday through Friday, starting this fall. So more teaching, more Messianic Jewish praise and worship, more great guests sharing on topics like the Jewish roots of your faith, Bible prophecy, and kernel and world events surrounding Israel. 
For more information on our broadcast schedule, you can go to www.jewishvoice.tv and be sure to stay in touch with us on Facebook and you'll be up to date on everything that Jewish Voice is doing around the globe. Thanks again for joining us tonight. Until next time, I want to remind you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible says they shall prosper that love thee. Don't forget to get Joel's new book and my CD, and we'll see you next time. God richly bless you. Your gracious gift and support of the work of Jewish Voice right now will make you a vital part of providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world. Today, we are currently preparing for one of our next medical clinics to bless a remote Lost Tribes community in Zimbabwe who clearly have ties to the ancient people of Israel, particularly the Levites, and have been practicing distinctly Jewish customs for centuries. Our medical teams will provide more than just physical care and comfort. They will share God's love and the good news that Jesus is their promised Messiah. Today, we urgently need your help to equip and fund this vital upcoming outreach. Time is literally running out for many of the most vulnerable there, especially infants and toddlers. You can help save them, but you must act now. Will you be a blessing to these needy Jewish people? As our special thank you, when you share a gift of any size right now, we will send you the exciting new book by today's guest, Joel Richardson, called When a Jew Rules the World, What the Bible Really Says About Israel in the Plan of God. This remarkable book will open your eyes to the reality of the coming thousand-year rule of Yeshua from Jerusalem. As an additional expression of our appreciation for your support, we'll also send you the perfect compliment to this book, Jonathan Burness's teaching on CD, The Dangerous Lie of Replacement Theology. Tackling this deceptive teaching that has infiltrated churches about Jewish people in Israel being replaced in God's plans, purposes, and promises, equipping you to refute this dangerous doctrine. Now, if God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $120 or more today, we'll send you the gifts just mentioned, plus two additional inspirational gifts to enrich and deepen your connection to the Jewish roots of your faith. These include the Jonathan Burness teaching on CD titled, God's Plan for Israel, and we'll send you the beautiful and meaningful Yeshua Menorah, this lovely decorative piece features a cityscape of the holy city Jerusalem inscribed with the name Yeshua. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share a gift in support of this vital outreach and request your thank you resources, please call or click now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some very needy Jewish people. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people.
God wants you to play in reaching His chosen people. Answer the call to join us during this historic time in Ukrainian history and this appointed time on God's calendar. Call 1-800-299-9374 or go to www.jewishvoice.org slash festival for details. Be an important part of sharing the Messiah's love with Jewish people in Ukraine. Imagine celebrating the miraculous power of the Passover against the breathtaking backdrop of the sparkling Eastern Caribbean Sea on board a luxurious Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Rejoice at the Messianic Passover Seder led by Rabbi Jonathan Burness, remembering God's mighty hand delivered the Jewish people from bondage. Worship because the miracle held a mystery revealed and completed in Yeshua, Jesus, the Passover Lamb, an ultimate sacrifice for our sins. This is the Jewish Voice seven day Passover cruise on the turquoise waters of the Eastern Caribbean and the enchanting white sand islands of St. Martin, St. Thomas, and Nassau, Bahamas. You don't want to miss the beauty, worship, and celebration as we share the mystery and the miracle of the Passover on the seas. Join Jonathan Burness and Jewish Voice April 16th through 23rd, 2016. Cabin Space is limited. Book now for the best rooms and rates. Call or click today.